UFC 295 takes place this Saturday, and I'm here to give you my full card predictions and betting breakdown. Starting out the early prelims, we have Dennis Bazookia versus Jamal Emmers, and I'm taking Jamal Emmers by decision because he has good wrestling defense, and he also has very solid striking. Dennis Bazookia trains out of a very good camp, which is the Ray Longo MMA camp with Aljamain Sterling, Murad Zvalashvili, and other fighters as well. And Dennis Bazookia, he's got pretty good wrestling, and he's got powerful hands as well. He's going to pressure you, but... I just trust Jamal Emerson to be able to stop these takedowns, but this is not a very confident pick at all. I could really see Dennis Bazookia coming out here, even clipping Jamal Emers, wrestling him to a decision. I know he didn't look very good in his de debut, but that was against Sean Woodson, and Sean Woodson is a solid fighter, and also that was on very, very short notice. I think with the full camp, he would look much better. Moving on to Joshua Van versus Kevin Borjas. Look, in my opinion, this could be fight of the night. I see this being an absolutely scrappy decision. I think Joshua Van is going to pull this out just because he is the better mixed martial arts. He does have some wrestling in his back pocket, and he will be able to take down Kevin Borjas if this really does become too scrappy for him. Kevin Borjas, he can scrap. He doesn't have very good takedown defense. He will find his way up to the feet eventually, but he is just not very good with his takedown defense. He has powerful hands, and he is so much fun to watch, but he kind of starts out very slow. So in my opinion, I'm taking Joshua Van by 29-28 uh, decision. He's going to get the first two rounds, and then Kevin Borjas is going to make it very interesting in the third round, potentially finishing him. But I have to go with Joshua Van here. He had a very, very impressive debut against Algis Zamagulov, who is no joke. I know he's out of the UFC right now, but um, he had a bunch of decisions that didn't go his way, and that kind of contributed to why he was cut from the UFC. Joshua Van, he seems legit. He's 22 years old, and Kevin Borjas is very young as well. He's 25. But uh, Joshua Van's a guy that I have to trust in going forward, especially against a guy like Kevin Borjas, who I don't really trust his fight IQ. Moving on to Kyung Ho Kang versus John Castaneda. I'm going to be going with John Castaneda by decision. I just like his pressure, and I like his ability to mix up the wrestling and the striking. I think his striking style, where he goes and impresses people, he is very hittable, which is why I am not super confident in this matchup, because Kyung Ho Kang does have power, and he's not bad off the back foot. He can clip um, John Castaneda, and he also has pretty decent wrestling himself. And he does have submissions in his back pocket as well. Look, John Castaneda, I think, will pressure him. He will get hit, but he eventually just will find the takedowns, and he will mix in the takedowns with a strike and we'll win this by decision. I'll go 29-28. Uh, I think Kyung Ho Kang might drop him one of these rounds, really hurt him, but we'll see. This is a fun matchup, very interesting to predict, but I got to go with the Castaneda side. He actually owns a win over Muin Gafarov, who recently beat Nathaniel Wood. It was a very weird outcome to that fight because there was a lot of cheating in there, but Muin Gafron doesn't look half bad. Moving on up the card, we have Jared Gordon versus Mark Madsen. I'm going with Jared Gordon by decision, and this is probably my most confident pick on the card. I'm saying like a 65% chance to win because Jared Gordon, he's looked pretty decent lately. Look, in my opinion, he was beating Bobby Green up until the weird headbutt. That was his last fight, and then before that, he lost to Patty Pimblett, but that was a robbery, and he should have beaten Patty Pimblett, um, but He's not a fantastic fighter, but Mark Madsen is dog, bro. Mark Madsen is not good. In my opinion, he actually lost to Vince Pichel because you can argue that Vince Pichel did much more damage than Mark Madsen, and Mark Madsen really didn't threaten any submissions, didn't really land any shots on the ground. Mark Madsen is not good, guys. He doesn't have a good gas tank. And Jared Gordon, I could even see, like, really threatening him in the third round with the KO. But I think Jared Gordon's going to be able to stuff a majority of the takedowns or get back to his feet. And he showed pretty solid takedown defense against Patty Pimblett. I do trust him in this matchup. I'm going with Jared Gordon by decision. Moving on up the card, we have Nazim Sadikov versus Vyacheslav Borshev. This is a very, very tough matchup to predict, in my opinion. Nazim Sadikov, he's got a lot of power in the hands, but he's also got pretty good wrestling as well. He trains out of the Ray Longo gym, like I mentioned earlier, with the Aljamain Sterling, Murad Valashvili, and also Matt Favolo, who we'll get to later. But he's got very pressure-heavy striking, if that makes sense. He goes at the opponents. He really does throw a lot of power into his shots, but he is very hittable. I think Evan Elder was on his way to beating him, and then Evan Elder's eye got opened up by a cut, and then there was a doctor stoppage. And then since that fight, Evan Elder hasn't really looked fantastic. He lost to Preston Parsons, and uh, another name that I'm not remembering right now, but Evan Elder hasn't looked fantastic, and Nazim Sadikov wasn't really able to dominate that matchup the way that I want him to. But Nazim Sadikov, as you can probably see by the last name, does have some wrestling, does have some grappling to his name, and he can absolutely get Vyacheslav Borshev down, and he can absolutely control him, since he's from a good camp as well, but I think he's being a little bit overrated because he beat Terrence McKinney. Look, I am on the train that Terrence McKinney is not good, and his, over, his first round um, danger is a little bit overrated because this guy is very open to counters, and all he is is he's explosive and super powerful, but if you're decent and you can avoid the shots, you will beat Terrence McKinney. Terrence McKinney was able to take down Nazim Sadikov and hold him there for four minutes. I don't really believe in Nazim Sadikov's wrestling all that much, 
And Vyacheslav Borshev is a fantastic striker. Look, he had a lot of success in kickboxing, and now he's transitioned to MMA, and he showed gross throughout each and every one of his fights. Look, he gets taken down a lot. I do know that. That is the big red flag here when you're on the Borshev side. But he gets up a lot as well. And Nazim Sadikov, he's going to want to entertain the striking. He is mainly a striker. I know his coaches might want him to shoot the takedowns, but watch the Alvin Elder fight. This guy was getting dropped. He was smiling. He was having the time of his life. He likes to stand up. I do think Borshev is going to sleep him in round two. I think Borshev in his last fight against Jair Mahashate, Mahashate shot in on two takedowns, and he showed good takedown defense to me. I know Mahashate isn't this world-class wrestler, but he showed great reaction time. He stuffed it with perfect technique, and that's just something I like to see, considering his last loss was over a year ago. I think over two years. No, it was over a year and like a month ago, I believe. But that was to Mike Davis and Mark Jacasey, two horrible matchups for him. And I don't. I think they're better wrestlers, or they're going to have a different game plan than Nazim Sadikov. Nazim Sadikov is going to go out here expecting to spark him on the feet, and then he might get clipped and then shoot a takedown. But Vyacheslav Borshev is going to be improving at a rapid rate. Round 2 KO, not super confident. And I love Borshev, but I don't think I'm biased in this pick at all. Moving on up the card, we have Tabitha Ricci versus Lupita Godinez. Tabitha Ricci is a grappler. She's got okay wrestling. It's pretty solid. And then she also has very good BJJ. Lupita Godinez, very good wrestler. Okay BJJ, and her striking is pretty solid as well. Look, Godinez... I always want her to grapple in her fights. I don't want her to grapple here. I want her to strike with Tabitha Ricci because she is the better striker, and I think she's going to do that. Honestly, I think she's going to keep this on the feet and just outstrike Tabitha Ricci for three rounds. I'm going 30-27, Lupita Godinez, but if she engages in the grappling, it does scare me a little bit because Tabitha Ricci does have very good scrambles and submissions off her back. Um, yeah, Godinez decision. Moving on up the card, we have Steve Erseg versus Alessandro Costa. I almost went with Costa, but then I rewatched the Dvorak fight, and... While Steve Ursag really hasn't proven himself in the regional scene, he did have a very great performance against David Vorak. I know he got clipped, but it was always when he was rushing in. It was never when um, the opponent was pressuring him. And Alessandro Acosta, if he knocks him out, he's probably going to try to pressure Steve Ersag. And Alessandro Acosta wasn't able to knock out Jimmy Flick in round one. Look, Jimmy Flick is an extremely chinny guy. I think he's got knocked out six times in his career. Jimmy Flick is so chinny. He needs to be out of there at round one if you're going to knock out a guy like Steve Erseg, who's very quick in and out. And like I said, only gets clipped truly on the counters, in my opinion. Very quick in and out. Steve Erseg may, might uh, mix in some takedowns, but we're going Erseg decision in this matchup. Moving on up the card, we have Pat Sabatini versus Diego Lopez. I'm going with Pat Sabatini. I know a lot of you guys like Diego Lopez. I like him too. I think he's a lot of fun. He's got power in the hands. He's got great submissions. But Pat Sabatini, he's got great wrestling. Diego Lopez, not a great wrestler. Horrible takedown defense, actually. I, I don't want to say Pat Sabatini is a fantastic wrestler. But he's got good wrestling, and he will get Diego Lopez down if he tries. And he's also got very good submissions. I honestly think this is going to be a very boring decision, unfortunately. And I think he's going to uh, ride out a 30-27 decision. They might give Diego Lopez a round. And I almost picked Diego Lopez because I was thinking he's going to threaten all these submissions. And they might give him the round just off of submission attempts. But ah, Sabatini is too good on the ground for me to just think that and also he is like a, a favorite which I was very surprised to see considering how much of the community is on Diego Lopez's side it almost feels like a betting trap I think we should be on the Pat Sabatini side for the reasons that I stated and kind of just seeing the betting odds and seeing that it looks like a trap for Diego Lopez to win or for you know what I mean for Pat Sabatini to get this done I got to be on the Sabatini side this is going to be a 30-27 very boring decision it's going to look like the Mark Jacasey Cal Fernandez fight and um, I know Pat Sabatini doesn't have the greatest chin Diego Lopez can chin him I don't think Lopez is submitting him. If he does, wow, his jiu-jitsu is great. But even then, I've watched some of uh, Diego Lopez's grappling exchanges on, I think it's Fury Grappling or something like that. He's been submitted a couple times in the past two years. He's not the GOAT of jiu-jitsu. We need to think of it that way. But he has a very fun style. I kind of hope he wins. Sabatini's the pick by unanimous decision. I know. I'm sorry, guys. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I think Sabatini lays and prays for three rounds. Moving on up the card, we have Benoit St. Denis versus... Matt Favola. This could be fight of the night. If it's not Joshua Van versus Kevin Borjas, I think this will be. The main event could be as well, but I think that will end a little bit too quickly. So hyped for this matchup. So hyped. Everyone's on the Favola side. I'm not here. And I do think Benoit St. Denis is overrated and Favola is underrated. But I still think Benoit St. Denis is tough enough to pull this off. Look, Look at Eliza Daleski Dos Santos fight. I did not say that correctly, but he recently fought Renat Fokradinov and he fraud checked Renat Fokradinov, whatever the fuck it is. Sorry, I can't pronounce shit right now. But Eliza, he 
has solid striking. He has a lot of power, and he was able to hurt Renat in the third round and almost finish Renat. Renat was really hurt to the body, and if the ref stopped that, I wouldn't be super surprised. That's all I'm going to say at certain points of that finishing sequence or towards the end of that round. Um, but Elijah Zaleski, he has power in the hands. He was landing the most powerful shots he could potentially just throw. He, like, Benoit saint Denis was a standing mannequin for him to throw shots at. He was throwing full power on Benoit saint Denis, and he couldn't knock him down. His chin is insane. I know we've heard this before with Matt Favola. Everyone's saying Drew Dober's chin is crazy. I think Benoit saint Denis's chin is better than Drew Dober's. I trust him more because Drew Dober gets flash knocked down. Benoit saint Denis gets rocked, but he's still standing on his feet. And then he just comes back hard. This guy has, he's the definition of a dog. And I know... When you look at the French fighters, you don't really view them as the guys that will take a shot and keep coming. Benoit saint Denis is a badass. And Matt Favola is chinny. Look, I know he got knocked out by Terrence McKinney, but he got knocked down twice by Lando Venata. Lando Venata even was able to take him down. And Armin Sarukin dominated him on the ground. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, he's good wrestling. He trains at Ray Longo. Fair enough. I understand that. But Benoit saint Denis is one of these guys that has so much athletic potential. I don't say potential, but he's just so strong, similar to an Armin Sarukin, where he can grab you, and he can really just take you down, dump you down, just based off of athletic, athletic force alone. And with his chin combined, which I think is better than Drew Dober, this guy never gets flash knocked down, similar to what McKinney did to Dober. And while Favola's hands are much faster, and I do think Favola's going to clip Benoit saint Denis and hurt him, I don't think he's going to drop him. I don't think it's going to be anything like this. I think St. Denis, he can initiate clinches. I think he's going to get the takedowns when he tries to. I think he's going to get clipped. Then he's going to look to uh, get some takedowns, and he will get it because of how physically strong and big for the division he is. He's just a dense man. Pause. But you get what I'm saying, man. Um, Matt Favola, I think he's going to clip him. Round one, he's going to get round one. Um, just clearly off of damage. It's going to get to round two. Benoit St. Denis is going to start grap or scrapping. He's going to shoot a takedown. He's going to get it. Matt Favola gets back up to the feet. And also, I do want to mention, by, by the end of round one, I think we will see Benoit saint Denis get a takedown. And then round two, we're going to see him shoot another one, get Favola down, get back up on the feet, end up against the cage. And then we're going to see uh, Benoit saint Denis just swinging like a madman and KOing Matt Favola because he is chinny. And people have forgot that just because he has been coming out on top of these firefights. And you look at who Favola has beaten. Look, Drew Dober is a guy that is extremely hittable. Like we said, like if he could drop and really hurt Drew Dober... We were expecting it to happen because it wasn't a question of whether he was landing. It was a question of whether or not he was going to be able to hurt and KO Drew Dober. Which he did. Fair play to him. Surprised me. I was on the Dober side. But Benoit saint Denis, please watch the Lizy Dulesco Dos Santos. His, his fucking debut fight in the UFC. Rewatch that and tell me that's not the worst beating you've ever seen. And this guy was still in it the whole time. That fight should have been stopped five times. He got through it. Wasn't knocked down one time, man. This guy is the definition of a DAWG, a dog, man. I think he's going to get the KO in round two. I honestly do. I'm not super confident. Ever so slightly. And I understand Matt Favola trains at a good camp. He's got good wrestling defense. But Matt or Benoit saint Denis is this level of athlete that can get him down. And he has so many tools in the game. I could see him getting it done by submission. <sighs> I can't trust the chin of Matt Favola. But I could be so wrong here, honestly. I could be so wrong. This could be Matt Favola round one, two, KO. He could get it by decision. I just uh, There's certain guys that I believe in the ability to will their way to a win. When combined with their athleticism as well, Benoit saint Denis has to be that guy for me. Moving on up the card. We have Mackenzie Dern versus Jessica Andrade. I'm going with Mackenzie Dern. Almost picked Andrade. Because Andrade, she hasn't been successful, but she hasn't been successful at the bantamweight division. Now that it's down at straw weight, it's looking a little bit different. Actually, I think it was the flyweight div division. Excuse me. Now that she's back down at straw weight, I like this for her. She's got power in the hand. She's going to hit differently. But she's been a little bit too passive for my liking lately. And in order to beat Mackenzie Dern, I want you to get her out of there early. You need to be landing massive shots to really be backing up a Mackenzie Dern. Because Mackenzie Dern doesn't have very good takedowns. That's why I was so reluctant to pick her here but what she is good at doing she does pull the guard and once you're on the ground once you're in these grappling exchanges you're kind of fucked we saw it in the Angela Hill fight Angela Hill would get in a good position and then Mackenzie Dern would scramble threaten submissions and then end up on top or get it back up to the feet and then Mackenzie Dern her striking looked little, pretty good against Angela Hill and I do rate Angela Hill striking look Angela Hill she's coming off a win against Denise Gomes but before that in my opinion she beat Amanda Lemos when it was like two years ago maybe a year ago something like that I, in my opinion, she won that fight, and that was completely on the feet. I really do rate her striking for a female. And um, Amanda Lemos, she was able to knock out Marina Rodriguez. A little bit of an early stoppage, but still very impressive. I do rate Angela Hill striking. Mackenzie Dern, 
with the takedown threat, I think will really make Jessica Andrade very passive, and that's just not the Jessica Andrade I want to trust in. So I think um, eventually Mackenzie Dern is going to pull guard. Jessica Andrade is going to entertain the ground game, and um, we're going to see Mackenzie Dern just get a submission, maybe a guillotine, maybe something like that, finding the rear naked choke. I just trust her to scramble and find her way on the back of Jessica Andrade. Moving on up the card, we have Tom Asma versus Sergey Pavlovich. I already broke this down in a more in-depth video on my YouTube channel. If you'd like to have a more in-depth breakdown, make sure to check that out. But I'm going with Pavlovich by round one knockout. Look, I think he'll be able to stop the takedowns from Tom Aspinall. I think Tom Aspinall is going to look to go out there, blast double legs, and I think that's the best takedown for Sergey Pavlovich because he, just the way his weight is distributed, he's going to be able to stop these takedowns very well. This is also short notice for Tom Aspinall, and Sergey Pavlovich has been training his takedown defense for either a Stipe Miocic or a John Jones. He's got a lot of power. What I don't like, though, is Tom Aspinall is so quick in and out. I can honestly see Tom Aspinall having a lot of success on the feet. If he sticks to the game plan of circling around the octagon, throwing leg kicks, and that front kick to the body, if he keeps using that very commonly. Tom Aspinall also has power in his hands, but Sergey Pavlovich has such a good chin that I don't really think Tom Aspinall is going to stun him or even hurt him on the feet. It's possible, though. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. But uh, Sergey Pavlovich, I think eventually he will find the KO against Tom Aspinall. I think Tom Aspinall will entertain the striking a little bit too much. I don't want him entertaining the hands at all if I'm his coach. And I would also tell him that I want him to shoot in on single legs and look for the trips rather than the double legs just because of the way his um, Sergey Pavlovich's weight is distributed. I think if he goes for single leg, really turns the corner and drives, that's where he'll find the most success. And then with the trips, we've seen Sergey Pavlovich get taken down by Alistair Overeem. But even then in the Alistair Overeem fight, I would argue he showed pretty solid takedown defense up until the trip that did get him down. And that was a weird scenario where he threw a knee and Alistair Overeem timed a perfectly time trip and he got him down to the canvas and then from there he was a fish out of water right and Aspinall absolutely can't take him down submit him in round one KO him in round one but I do think Pavlovich is going to stuff a double leg and then from there he's going to push Aspinall up near the cage get in that range based off of just when Aspinall shoots a takedown he's going to use the failed takedown as a way to get into range close the distance and clip him up against the cage we're going to see him hurt him Aspinall's going to shoot on another another takedown and then he's going to clip him again and eventually he's going to fall to his knees like curtis blaze did and you're going to see a similar finishing sequence to the curtis blaze sergey pavlovich matchup i'm super excited for this one not very confident slightest slightest lean i was at like 53 52 percent chance yesterday and now i'm taking it down to like a 50.5 percent chance of lean man super interesting matchup super excited for this one i really hope pavlovich pulls this one off yeah we'll see man moving on to the main event which is an absolute banger in my opinion this is the best fight in the entire ufc these two are badasses alex pereira versus yuri prohaska alex pereira by round two ko is the pick and i'm going to tell you why right now Look, I, I watch a little bit of glory kickboxing myself. There's a fighter named Donegi Abena who he fought at glory kickboxing for the interim light heavyweight belt. Look, Donegi Abena has a style where he pressures forward. He's got a lot of power, and there's a lot that you need to worry about coming from Donegi Abena. Donegi Abena actually fought, I think, three days ago. Um, it was Saturday, same day as the UFC Sao Paulo card, and he came out as the victor for the light heavyweight belt. Look, Donegi Abena, since Alex Pereira and Artem Vakatov have left kickboxing, has had a lot of success. Donegi Abena really pushes forward, and he has great straight punch and he's just going to pressure you non-stop no matter how much power you have and that's what Alex Pereira excuse me that's what Yuri Prochaska is going to do he's going to push forward and Alex Pereira really threaten the power but even then Alex Pereira was able to tag up some of the leg kicks get out of the way and eventually he found the counter left hook um, as Donegi Abena overextended on a right hand and we see Yuri Prochaska time and time again overextend on his straight punches and his chin is there to be hit this is exactly how I see the knockout sequence going except I don't think he's going to get flatlined I think Yuri's going to get wobbled Pereira's going to get him up against the cage He's going to land a flurry of punches that's going to look pretty similar to how he finished Adesanya the first time in MMA. And then it's actually going to be less of an early stoppage, even though Pereira was going to finish Ezra Adesanya, as we all know. Look, this matchup is so exciting for me. Alex Pereira is my most favorite fighter, and my second most favorite fighter is Yuri Prochaska. So this is just super intriguing to me. I understand. Yuri Prochaska can go out here. Don't underestimate him. He's got great straight punches. He's the most explosive and most powerful light heavyweight, in my opinion. And he showed pretty good grappling as well. If he wants to take down Pereira, he is athletic enough to do it. He is able to explode and really drive. Look, Jan Blahovic, I don't really like his takedown offense. I really don't like his takedowns at all. Yuri Prochaska, they might not be technical, but they're going to be hard to stuff due to how much of a physical specimen he is. I do want to care, compare this back to the Abena fight that I was mentioning, and I do recommend that you guys go and watch this fight. Alex Pereira was at a very high pace, and he was definitely taking risks, and we have seen time and time again that he gets clipped by straight shots, as we see in the Izzy fights, which is what scares me about this matchup. But with the Abena fight, he was able to just 
calculate himself within harm's way and the kickboxing arena is much smaller than the the ufc octagon and since he's been in the ufc octagon we've seen him target the leg kicks time and time again and from there he's found a lot of success i think the best part of alex Pereira's game is not his left hook it's the leg kicks that set up the left left hook and i think he is the best leg kicker in the entire ufc i'd love to be open to, for debates but he out leg kicked jan Blachowicz, who i currently before um alex Pereira beat Jan Blachowicz. I thought Jan Blachowicz was the best leg kicker in the game, and Alex Pereira was number two. Opinions change, man. Yuri Prochaska is super, super heavy on the lead leg. Alex Pereira is going to chew it up, and I think we'll probably see him be a little bit more cautious in round one, try to find the angle for the left hook, and then eventually when it comes to late round two, after he's chewed up Yuri's leg, kind of circled a lot, similar to what he did against Shikrin, uh setting up the knockout, we're going to see uh, Yuri Prochaska overextend on a right hand, and he's going to Find the shot, left hook, counter right as he slips on the outside, left hook right over the top, similar to the Abena KO. And we're going to see here he get hurt. And like I said, the finishing sequence is going to be sick. This is an absolutely insane one. And I also do want to mention if this goes five rounds, I think Yuri Prasca has better cardio, but Alex Pereira is going to invest in the leg kicks. And these leg kicks are going to have a massive, massive effect on Yuri Prochaska because of just the way he strikes, how unorthodox he is. And there's so many things that Yuri Prochaska does that just I can't trust him. I understand with Yuri Prochaska, whenever he gets into a fight, it's going to be a war in his superpower as he really makes it a 50-50 match because you're not just going to go out here and have a chess match with, uh, with Yuri Prochaska unless you have super good leg kicks or these other X factors um, such as extreme power yourself. And I just really do trust that Alex Pereira will leg kick him and find the KO late round two because he has shown good counter shots before. And it's just a really underrated part of his game. I know he gets touched, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have very good counter shots. We haven't really seen him respect an opponent's power in the UFC from the jump. We have in kickboxing. His game plan is different. We know this for a fact. That's why you have to go with Alex Pereira here. But Yuri Prochaska, fuck, man. Don't underestimate the guy. He has so many tools. He is so quick, so explosive. But he is coming off that shoulder injury. And as you guys probably know, shoulder injuries are no joke. And just that alone... It does scare me because you lose range of mo motion in your shoulders. Official pick is Alex Pereira. This main event is insane. The co-main event is also very insane. When it comes to main event and co-main event pairing, it hasn't been this good in a long fucking time. With that being said, that's going to be this video. If you have any questions or disagree with any of my picks, I would love to, re love to respond to you in the comments. As always, have a good one. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'm out. Peace.